Hey guys, welcome to Pest Control Millionaire, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of pest control and talk industry experts who turn their passion into profit. Join us as we interview successful entrepreneurs and share valuable insights and provide you with the strategies and inspiration you need to build your own very own multi-million dollar pest control empire. And today we have a super awesome guest. You probably, uh, I know a lot of you reached out to me recently and said, hey, that podcast you just did was super awesome. Uh, we were, in a, we were in a text thread the other day with another person that's very well known in the industry, uh, said the same thing. So made a really big impact. So we thought, hey, why not jump? I actually spent to say, hey, we should probably do this again. Jump on here and uh, you know check this thing out again because it did so well. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, Spencer back from Pro Force Pest Control. And today we're just going to dive deep into a little bit more of the door-to-door side. I feel like that's a lot of the questions that we get. Um, and we figured we would just uh, lay it all out there and show you what it's like. So Spencer, welcome back to the show, man. Appreciate you for having me, Jonas. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> obviously we had some really good feedback on the last one. So we jumped back on and said, hey, we should probably do this again. And we had some questions in there that we could probably answer for a lot of the listeners. So again, let's just uh, kind of jump into it. Let's just kind of tell them what we're going to do today. Yeah. So today we want to go over all the benefits to -to door-to-door sales and mostly the benefits for the actual reps. Sometimes as owners of businesses and we're trying to, to find the right guys to bring in, one of the barriers to finding the right guys is being able to properly lay out what benefits those people are going to see while they do this and after they do this. Yeah. And I'd say a lot of the business owners will be listening to the show too. And I know a lot of my reps actually listen to the show. So I think it'd be good for both sides. You know, we can talk strategy as a business owner and you can also, we can also talk strategies and pros and cons as a, as a rep and pros and cons as a, as the owner. Right. We get this a lot because right. Obviously it's recruiting season. Yep. Uh, I think you told me you had 91 phone calls. I know that James, uh, he said by, he woke up at like six 30 yesterday and by eight 30, he already had like 45 text messages sent out just following up. So it's busy for us too. Exactly. Um, but we, we run into a lot of people that they, that it seems like they want to do it right. Like, they're right on the edge and they just, like, but they don't want to commit. What do you find um, that are some reasons that people just don't want to commit to it? And how, and how do we help them overcome some of those? Exactly. Yeah. So yesterday, for example, I was on the phone with uh, quite a few different people, as you just mentioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a lot of phone calls. Yeah. It was a lot of phone calls. Obviously, some of those didn't answer. So it was just uh, ringing. But uh, one of those phone calls, uh, a potential sales guy brought up a couple concerns. And I know that there's a ton of different concerns as you're looking for a new potential career or a summer opportunity. And his concerns, for example, were the fear of rejection, right? So let's start with that one. You know, Jonas, you, you've managed a lot of sales guys and let's face it, that's a, that's a re- real fear you're going to go out there, you're going to talk to 70 plus people every single day. And if you're an average rep, you might be selling two, three accounts in that day. Right. And so that means you got rejected quite a few times. So this fear of rejection is a real fear. However, my response to that is that no matter what in life, if you're not pushing yourself outside of that comfort zone, you're going to have that fear with no matter what you do. If you go apply for a job and you go to an interview, if you haven't figured out how to overcome that fear of rejection, then you're going to stumble through that interview. And it's not going to make that interview easy. You might not get that job just because of your fear of rejection. So honestly, I think that's one of the benefits to doing door-to-door sales is learning how to overcome that fear of rejection. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> I read a book a couple of years ago called Rejection Proof. It's super awesome. This is a, it's a fantastic. And it's kind of in what kind of one of those times when I was like getting door to door, I'd never knocked doors before, but I listened to my book and I can't remember the exact story, but he literally just goes out and knocks on doors just to, just to get told no. So what I did <clears throat> is I'm before all, I think I might have said this before on the podcast, but before anyone comes to work here, I tell them to go to the, to the mall or the grocery store. And just go introduce yourself to some random strangers. And they all have to look differently. You can't just go to the ones who look like a bro and look like us. They got to look to the, the mean, the old, the scary looking people. 
just walk up to them, introduce introduce yourself to them, and give them a nice, warm, genuine compliment. That's awesome. You do that four, five, six times, the wall, like you're going to be so much more confident just by doing simple things like that. Yeah. That's funny. One of the things, one of the tools that I, I give my guys or a task that I'll give them to, to deal with this as well is go to McDonald's or whatever restaurant you want to go to, but let's use McDonald's in this example and order your meal. And then after you're done ordering and you've paid, ask them, be like, oh yeah, do you mind giving me a free ice cream cone? And just see what they say. What's funny is like 70% of the time, they'll just go get an ice cream cone and hand it to you. You know, if, if ice cream's working at McDonald's, you know, that's kind of rare, but um, <laughs> if the machine's working, a lot of the times they'll give you an ice cream for free. McDonald's is wonder why when this podcast drops, why 2000 plus people ask for free ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And that was really funny. You said that because I've done that in the past and it might've came from that book. I remember where you just walk up to someone at either the restaurant or whatever, and just ask, use your first and say, Hey, can I have the Jonas discount? And they're like, what? Like, yeah, can I have the Jonas discount? They're like, uh, let me go talk. I've done this before. Like, let me go talk to my manager. Like, we don't know what that is, but we're willing to give you a discount. Was everything okay? I was like, I literally just like, yeah, I was actually just kidding, but it's fine. But it does work. <laughs> yeah. But you just have to learn to ask for things. So what we've done in the past too, Spencer, is that uh, the first couple of days of, um, of work that, they, that the reps actually show up here, we have them do a scavenger hunt. So you just get a list of 15, 20 items and say, here you go, go find this stuff. And it's fun. It's a game. They can partner up if they want to. Yeah, but one of the things on there is obviously a pest control deal, right? Yeah. Uh, we have a list that we just made for them that it just gets them to go up in the door and asking for things. So it's a really good game that, that we use when they come in, they get excited. They have a lot of fun with it. Uh, they want to win, of course, because they're competitive. Uh, and that you know, it works every single time. And if they get into a funk, like during the middle of summer, because it happens to some reps or most reps, we'll literally just pull up the game, let them go play it again. So another strategy that you use for that as well. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only thing similar to that that I've done is I'll I'll have them ask for like a banana or a fruit at, at the door. And whoever can get the most pictures of fruit that they've been given <laughs> wins, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's like running little competitions like that throughout the summer uh, for the business owners that are out there. You know, bottles of water. We'll have competitions. Who can get the most bottles of water and post it into our pronto? Just again, just to get used to asking for things, having a little fun with the guys, keeping them engaged. So yeah, I agree there. Um, so what's another what's another reason why people don't want to do this? Uh, a big one that we get pushed back on, I would say, is uh, pay. Right? Like they're not guaranteed pay. Or most guys come out, they're making you know, let's just go with fourteen to eighteen bucks an hour. They're going to make, you know, five to fifteen thousand dollars in a summer, maybe. Right. Uh, but there, but it's not. But here it's not guaranteed. And uh, I'm sure you get pushed back on that, too. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and how do you help them overcome that part of it? Yeah. So it's funny, actually, in North Carolina, they just changed uh, some rules here. Oh, yeah. We're talking about this. Yeah. Yep. So it's a little bit easier now because I kind of am forced to overcome that. <laughs> you know, we, we have to W2 our, our sales guys during the summer now. And with that being said, they're with the amount of hours that they put in, they're pretty well guaranteed, even at the lowest minimum wage possible, you know, like $500 a week. And the the thing is, though, that's not the biggest upset for me because now that they're W-2, we can hold them to actually working a certain amount of hours and we can track that based on the doors they knock and everything like that. And the thing is, is you know, you've, you've seen this, I'm sure. Anybody that goes out there and actually puts in the, the amount of time and the qualified work, they, they put in the inputs, they're going to make sales. And... You know, to, to hit that minimum wage mark, you know, five hundred dollars a week or whatever, um, it's not that many sales, right? Like five sales a week, right? <clears throat> On industry, industry average. Yeah, exactly. And so the the thing is, is okay, that's less than one a day. If you're talking to 60, 70 people a day and pitching them and doing your, your the best job that you possibly can, even if you're not good you're probably going to sell five accounts a week. Yeah, I agree. And I always tell people that our, our you know, the industry averages, you know, two to three per day uh, as a rookie, you have to not try 
to, to get one sale a day. You literally have to not try. Like we had a guy last year. This is not a joke. Or maybe it's two summers ago. Young kid. That kid worked his tail off. He would knock 200 doors a day. Like no joke. But he always got a sale. Always. Just just from hard work. And what I love about your story it, in coming into door to door is you told me that, you know, you didn't really know anything about door to door when you started. You didn't know what the typical was, what the typical schedule was, how many doors people were typically knocking in a day. I had no idea. Yeah. And so you guys just went all out. You're knocking from like 730 in the morning, right? Until like 9 p.m. every day. And you were traveling two hours to get there to start knocking. Uh and so you guys just succeeded because of the amount of work that you actually put in, right? And and that amount of work led to you guys growing your skill set. So you got really good at it as well. And anybody that does that is gonna gonna be successful. It's the people, it's funny because like, all right, so I, I actually did an internship for one of my sales guys. He was a data analytics uh, major. And he needed to do a data project with his, with his internship. And so I gave him all of our knocking reports for 2017, right? And I told him, I was like, look, I wanna know how many hours you can, you can come up with that the average person worked, that they actually put time in knocking on doors. And so he ran all this data and looked at every logged pin. And if there was ever more than an hour and a half in between logged pins, then he was like, okay, they probably worked 30 minutes of that, but the other hour they didn't work, right? Because you're generally not on a door for more than 30 minutes, you know? And what's sad is we realized that nobody worked more than six hours on average a day. And that's because we had that preconceived notion of the, here's what the schedule is and Naturally, people just try to whittle away at that, you know, which is the wrong direction. Like that's not the mentality you want on your team. But the funny thing is, even with that uh, amount of time that they were putting on the doors, we were still averaging 2.38 accounts per person per day. And I know that exact number because, again, he did the data analytics. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think that when you when you really break it down to the reps when it comes to pay, you could pretty well just go ahead and guarantee them that they'll make a certain amount of money. You know, if you're a business owner and you're listening to this and you want to set a guarantee, then just set that alongside with an actual input that they have to hit. You know, pitch 60 people a day and I'll guarantee you a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. I, I think it's super smart. I mean, going back to the hours thing. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, most people are on the doors like 1130. But I was on the doors by 7, 7.30 because I didn't know any better. I was just out there spraying lawns and talking to the neighbors as I was going. And I said, I remember it was like 7, 7 or 7.45. I got my first sale and like by 9.30, I already had four deals in. I was like, dang. But again, I didn't know. Like, So now the new schedule like for most reps is on the doors by 11, 11.30. They're taking lunch by like 2, 3 o'clock. And it seems like they're done by like 7 or 8. But like, why not just go out there? If you're going to do this for the year, like, why not just go all in? I'm not saying start at 7 a.m., but maybe start at noon, right? And work till 10 o'clock. Bring food with you. Like, if you're going to go in, just go all in. Like, there's yeah. nothing else to lose. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you you start doing the math on it. All right. For example, if as you're interviewing these sales guys, get to know what their real goals are in life, right? So, for example, yesterday I was interviewing a guy – his name's Ryan. And I asked him, I was like, what do you want to be in life? But give me the why. Get down to the core reason why you want to be that. And he said, well, you know, I'm going to school to be a CPA. I said, okay, well, why? And he said, well, I want to make good money. I said, okay, define good money. Well, $200,000 a year. I was like, okay, is that what you're going to make as a CPA? Well, starting 70000 but I can work my way up to potentially that if I start my own firm and blah, 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 right? Yeah, right. Or if you're a partner. Yep. Yeah, there you go. And so he wants to make, say, $200,000 a year. So his, his core reason is why. Also, he doesn't mind numbers. So the, the type of job doesn't bother him, right? So he wants comfort in his job and he wants to make good money, right? So with that being said, that's the core reason why. Now let's work backwards and say, okay, can you get that same thing from door to door? You want something that you don't mind doing. Okay, well, 
we need to figure out whether or not you, you're going to mind knocking on doors. Why wouldn't you mind knocking on doors? Like what, what about that's going to bother you? Maybe it's getting rejected or getting yelled at. Well, is a CPA going to get rejected? Yeah, I've fired multiple CPAs and it was not a nice firing either because they really messed some stuff up. In fact, I still am owed money from 2020 by the IRS because of how bad my CPA messed up that year, you know? And so I wasn't very nice to him when I, <laughs> when I moved on. Um, and so you're going to have that same fear in that job. So is this really going to bother you anymore? No. Okay. Well, if you put in your efforts, could you make $200,000 a year? So we walk through this path of how you would do that. Okay, go out and knock for 100 days, sell two and a half, three accounts a day. We do the math on that, come up with the, what that number is. Okay, your first year, you make more than you would. And you know, in five months, you'd make more than you would in 12 months as a CPA coming out of college. Now, you're looking at, well, you take that story, you go back to talking to college athletes, you know, and I love your... You know, the fact that you've got a lot of wrestlers that work with you, I think that that's brilliant. I think that those are some of the, the best qualified people in this world to be able to do this kind of job. They're very tough people, right? Um, resilient. Very resilient people. Um, hardworking. They're not afraid of hard work. And so go back, find a bunch of wrestlers, find some other athletes uh, or other people that, that are going to be good at this. Tell them your story about how much money you made and what the job was like. Recruit those guys. How many guys do you think you can get from August until May of the next year? He's like, ah, probably 20. Okay, let's do the math on what you'd make if you recruit, manage, train, and generate success out of 20 guys, even if they're not as successful as you were your first year. And then now we're looking at that second year where he's getting pretty close to that $200,000 a year, right? And so it's, it's those kinds of stories and walking them down that path of, okay, here's what it could be. And you got to start kind of at the end. Okay, where do you want to get to? And then work it back to the beginning. Okay, here's the path that you take to get there within this industry. I'm sure you know plenty of people that are making more than $200,000 a year doing door-to-door, -door, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. And Dozens. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Hundreds probably at this point uh, oh, that I sure. know personally. For sure. I mean, I know guys that are making, you know, a million plus is wild. Exactly. Exactly. So, so really the sky's the limits. And so let's kind of start diving into a lot of those different benefits that we can kind of give business owners to talk about. And as well, the sales reps that are out there benefits that they might not even realize that they're getting so that they can start taking note of that and really exploit the advantages of these benefits that they have. Right. Well, the biggest thing is just figuring out like learning the skill, which, Sales is a, is a great skill. Get really good at one skill and you'll have a job forever. Whether it's in the pest control industry or whatever industry you want that you want in life, they're always looking for the best sales guys. So like take it from there and like it, it's such a great career. And like we know it because we're in it, but a lot of people like they just don't quite understand uh the level of maybe money. Maybe the money's not always the best thing to talk about, but uh, but let's go from there. Yeah. So the level of benefits, right? Because money is one of those benefits, but there's so many different benefits. And let's let's definitely start with the skill development. So like what skills do you gain as a door to door rep? You know, obviously enhanced communication. Your communication skills are definitely going to be better by the end of your first summer than they were when you started. Mostly because you're putting it into practice every single day. You know, why does Steph Curry make so many three pointers? It's because he takes 500 shots a day in practice, right? Okay, well, this is taking those shots every single day, enhancing your communication skills, your persuasion skills, your interpersonal skills through daily interactions with diverse clients. You know, these are all skills that will benefit you no matter what your future career is. And for a lot of you, I hope your future career is this. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to school for communication, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people are going to school for entrepreneurship or sales. Yep. Um, but then so you say the word sales and to an average person, like like the first thing they think of, obviously, is like that sleazy sales guy, yep. right? The used car salesman with the 
almost fully smoked cigar hanging out of his mouth, talk talking fast. Yeah. And as soon as you say sales, people like get like that dirty taste in their mouth. Like, so that's probably the first thing we have to overcome, right? Like, and it's so easy for me to overcome it, but it's like, we're literally just helping people solve problems. That's all we're doing. If they have a wasp issue or a bed bug issue or whatever, like we're just helping them with it. And sometimes like how many doors have you knocked been through? Like, Oh my gosh, well, my wife and I were just talking about that last night. Like, I can't believe you're here. Like, how many times have you heard that story? Oh, plenty, plenty, you know, and, and the amount of, I mean, just go to, you know, Google pro force pest control and look at the reviews and you'll see hundreds of customers in there talking about how grateful they are that they have pro force pest control. Right. Well, why is that? It's because somebody knocked on their door. You know, the majority of my customers by a long shot were sold on the doors. They would not have, the reason to, to say, oh man, I'm actually grateful for this company had we not knocked on their door, right? So you actually are benefiting, like that is one of the rewards of doing this is like community development. Uh, you're, you're actually benefiting people by doing this because, you know, back to the, the sleazy salesperson, that is not what this job is. You're not a good salesperson. In fact, you're not a salesperson in my book if you're that guy that you're thinking about. You're just a dirtbag. <laughs> that too yeah yeah so it, a good salesperson is somebody who is actually helping people resolve problems like you said and so like that's what i was saying like there's so many doors that i've knocked people like i like, couldn't believe that we had shown up there like uh, here's a good example last year uh we were in wisconsin somewhere and this lady was like I was, i've had this problem for a couple of weeks i don't know what's going on so she brought us in the house behind her entertainment center. There was wasps everywhere. The wasps that came in, in their chimney above their fireplace in the, in the, um, right above the flute area, there was a big giant wet spot. Mm. So I knew exactly what it was. So, you know, I, I poked a hole in there. They come flying out. There's videos on YouTube of this and they're flying everywhere. And I'm dusting inside the hole, but no one else could figure out what was going on. But they had a wasp or hornet's nest, I can't remember what it was, had built a, a nest in there. And, uh, and she's like, I could not believe that you guys had showed up on my door and I've been dealing with this for a couple of weeks now. I didn't know what to do. We were able to solve it right then and there. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and look, if you talk to 20 other business owners that do door to door pest control, they're going to have a lot of those stories, you know? So that's the thing. There is a lot of benefit that you're giving to people. So again, we're not telling you to go out and sell every single person that you talk to because you're, some of those people just don't need what you're offering. And that's perfectly fine. And some people have never even had pest control on their radar ever in their life. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because me and my brother, we grew up uh, very poor. And our, you know, my stepdad, my, my brother's dad, he would always, you know, we'd have ants in our cereal, for example, and he'd say, huh, free protein, right? So he, we couldn't afford it. So he had to make it, you know, justify the reason that we had bugs is like, ah, it's not, it's not that big of a deal, you know? But then yesterday, you know, Sterling, my brother in his community, he had in his neighborhood that he lives in, he had multiple people reach out to him because of termites. And, you know, whether it's us knocking on their door or them, them reaching out to us, like there's real problems. You know, he pulls out this person's uh, refrigerator and just a ton of swarmers started coming out of the wall, right? And then in multiple locations across the house, we found termite damage that they just didn't realize was going on. And so we're able to solve a very real problem for them and really prevent a lot of future problems and save them a lot of money in the end, right? And so that's that's the ultimate goal as a salesperson is to find people that you can actually help. You know, my mom, she used to always tell people, oh, Spencer's such a good salesperson. He could sell ice to Eskimos. And that always bothered me. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, it bothered me because, and I told my mom this, I'm like, look, that actually bothers me because that's not the kind of person that I am. I would never sell ice to an Eskimo unless that Eskimo they was They don't in, need it. Yeah, unless they were in, in need of clean ice, you know? Sure, I'll sell them clean ice if they need it, right? But I'm not going to sell somebody something they don't need. Um, let's go back to the schedule and, and maybe talk a little, little more about pay uh, for their reps. What does a typical summer look like for a sales rep? I think that's a good thing to talk about. Ask that question a little more thoroughly. I want to make sure I'm going down the right track that you're wanting to go down. So let's, uh, like, what does a summer look like for a rep? 
Like, what does her daily um, schedule look like? What does her weekly schedule look like? And what does the summer look like? All right. So let's start with talking about it from like a highly motivated rep that really wants to achieve something great. Right. I like it. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to cause somebody to take a schedule that they could do more in. Right. Uh, and you're the perfect example again, starting at seven 30 in the morning and going till, you know, nine, 10 PM every day. You know, if you want to achieve the most that you possibly can, then that schedule needs to be as lengthy as you possibly can make it right now. Everybody's different. Some people have different levels of endurance and on different days that might be different. So your goal as a sales rep should be to put in as many effective sales pitches as possible, which means you're going to have to push yourself mentally to be prepared when you're tired to overcome that, put on that smile, you know, not, not the fake smile, a real smile and knock on the next door and keep going. Right. So that schedule can differ is what I'm trying to say from, from person to person. And your goal as a sales rep should be to condition yourself to be able to get more out of the day. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's where like, for me, um, I wasn't a great sales guy. I had zero skills other than YouTube university, like I said, but I've always been a hard worker and that's what I had to do to get the sales probably that you could get in a few hours at first, you know? Sure. And that's the thing, you know, you, you, you start with, okay, let me put in a, a healthy study schedule. So one thing is, is practice. I tell all of my guys, your mir the mirror is your best friend. You know, a lot of people are very into videoing their sales pitch and then reviewing it. I, I prefer an instant feedback loop. If I'm looking at myself in the mirror and treating myself as the customer, then I can see what my face is doing right then and there. And I can start changing it right then and there instead of waiting until I watch this video and try to catch it then, right? And so I feel like the mirror is like an underrated tool. Put in a healthy amount of practice shots into the mirror, right? And so doing that every day, I would, I would recommend, you know, at least 15 to 20 minutes of, of pitching into the mirror every single day just to keep that skill set going and do that before you get out on the doors. I remember, I remember waking up like at three, 4 AM Spencer and like having to go to the bathroom, like in the middle of the night, you know, and I woke up, I was doing the pitch in my head at 4 AM. I couldn't shut it off. That's good. That's and, and that, if you can get to that point as a sales rep, like no doubt you will have crazy amounts of success, just like Jonas. It's just, this, it's just this weird tick in my brain that, like when I do something, I'm all in it. Like I, and I can't shut it off. Yeah. And that's good. Like, and that's where you want people to get to because when they get to that point and they get that, that, uh, that bug <laughs> to be a little funny here, you know, um, <laughs> when they get that bug and they start doing that and they start dreaming their pitch, you know, that's, that's really when you know you've crossed that level and you're going to really start seeing some, some amazing success stories. So that schedule, though, I, again, I don't necessarily want to recommend, hey, start at you know, 10 o'clock in the morning and go till 9 p.m. I want to recommend do everything that you can possibly do and just try to set a, a goal for yourself before you even start. Hey, I want to accomplish this thing. I want to make $100,000. OK, well, then work your way backwards and try to figure out what's it going to take to to make $100,000. You know, how many accounts is that? And then, okay, start working, get yourself a couple weeks in. How many accounts are you selling per day with the amount of hours that you're doing? Okay, do you need to in increase the amount of hours that you're working? Increase them if so, right? Um, you start doing the math on a 100-day summer and you take 30 minutes off per day, it ends up equaling about a week's worth of hours over the course of that 100 days. And Jonas, how many, how many accounts have you sold on your best week, you know, or just name a, a different rep, you know, what are you seeing guys do in a week? I've seen in my own team, someone do close to a hundred in a week, a hundred accounts in a week. And let's just say it, look, commissions range all across the board when it comes to pest control, but let's just say they only made a hundred dollars per account, which is, you know, low, you know? That's a lot of money that they made in that week. So 
how much is your 30 minutes a day worth to you? Is it worth that much? Try to maximize the amount of time. That's, that's like one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give to people is get out there and maximize your time for you. Not, not for your business owner that you're working for. Like this is for you. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like days of the week, like what do you recommend? Man, Saturdays are amazing. One, because everybody's home most of the day, right? Um, you know, my, my typical is Monday through Saturday. Look, a lot of people that I, I work with are, you know, pretty religious. And so they're just not going to work on a Sunday and that's perfectly fine with me. Um, so a, as many days out of that week as you can, we try to do like a half a day on one day just to kind of, you know, have a little bit of a break. And generally we pick Monday for that. Um, and I, I'm kind of torn between whether or not that half a day should be the first half of the day that you take off or the last half of the day. I, I don't really have a solid answer to that, but on that day, I'd almost recommend just not even doing a training meeting that day and Go have some fun. Yeah, exactly. And, and maybe you start your day on the doors earlier. If you're going to do the first half of the day, okay, start knocking at, you know, seven thirty eight, nine o'clock, somewhere in there and knock until three or four o'clock and then be done and then go have some fun for the rest of the day or the opposite, you know, take the first half of the day off and maybe start at noon or one o'clock and then knock until nine, you know? Yeah. We, um, we had a couple, uh, guys, well, we've tried multiple times from Florida to Arizona to Wisconsin. We've knocked all over the place and we've, we've tried to sell on Sundays and every time we try to sell on a Sunday, we got our ass kicked. Like, and that was just like everyone, they would just be like, you know, literally I would, I'd talk to you guys. I'd like to, I'd buy from you guys, but just not on a Sunday. Uh, we've had some success work, working like Sunday evenings, uh, going out for a couple hours or prime time, getting one or two. But so we, we just, we kind of shut down the whole Sunday morning for sure. Uh, Saturday, absolutely devil's day, right? Go out there, be out the doors early. Uh, I don't want to give a time, but let's just say nine o'clock work from nine to one. You know, most people leave their house. It seems like in the afternoon because they're busy doing other things. But go out there and get one, two sales, right? Like just make your Saturday worth something. But it's a double stay where everyone's home. Every door you knock, they're going to answer the door typically. So uh, use that. Um, I brought up some data when you were talking about uh, you guys you had done some data for you guys, some analytics. And we for, took our information for the last three years since we've knocked. And we've broken down how much money you make per door knock. There you go. So as a, as a rookie, uh, you make $6.34 for every door that you knocked. And how many doors a day are they knocking? That's what I'm saying. So how many, how many doors would you knock, right? You'll make $6 per door, right? Uh, as a second year rep, it was $17.50 per door. And then as a third year rep, it was $22.65 per door. That's awesome. That's great data. I love that. So, and we use that data to say, these are real numbers from our actual guys, from our company that have done this for the last three years. So if you go out and work hard, these are what you'll get. You go knock a hundred doors as a, as a rookie, you're gonna make about 600 bucks, you know? So it's, it's pretty simple. The math is there. Exactly. So like, I don't, we're not, it's not like we're like beating around the bush here. Like a, we can talk about pay, uh, and just go with industry average. Like, um, Typically, it's about 20% of contract value, right? And yes, there's higher, there's lower, but let's just go with 20%. Like, so guys are making, you know, average contract value is 600 bucks. They're making a roughly $160 per account. Yep. You know, that's just, that's just what you see in the market. And in pest control, lawn care, kind of the same thing, but uh, the, the really, obviously, really good money. You go sell two a day, you made 300 bucks. You go sell four a day, you made 600 bucks in a day. It's, and it's not that hard. Um, Physically, we can talk about that too. Like physically, it's for like people who love to go to the gym and love to work out, like love to be active and not sit behind a desk like you, Spencer, and myself. Like we get to, it's basically like going to the gym. You're just walking from door to door, like running, you get your exercise in throughout the day. And, and if you want to jump on a Segway, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a hot day. Get yourself a little bit of a breeze and, and be on a Segway and get from door to door that way if you want to. It's funny. I kind of still prefer the walking. That's just what I grew up you know, doing with door to door. And so I have a hard time using the segways. Now, if I go to a neighborhood where it's like, you know, a, de a decent walk in between each house. Yeah. Segway is really, really nice. Um, 
But yeah, I, I prefer being able to stand up the majority of the day. I don't love sitting behind a desk. And if I am behind a desk, a lot of times I'm standing anyways. And so, yeah, this is a great physical job. That's not taxing. Like, you know, it's not like you're out there digging ditches in 90 degree weather. You know, that was my alternative job. My first year when I went out to do sales was my dad offered me 12 grand to come out and dig ditches for him with his construction company. Could have been doing that. Instead, I chose to go knock doors. And I was a, a laborer hauling lumber up two flights of stairs in 90 degree weather too, like building houses. It, this is definitely not uh, taxing like that for sure. Uh, mentally, right? Mentally, it's more of a challenge. It can be. And I think that that really just boils down to how you condition your, your mental status. You know, uh, if you're, if you're looking at it as that it is mentally challenging, then it will be. If you look at it for really what it is, like you just talk through it, like, what is it? All right. I'm going to talk to a hundred people a day, you know, maybe 60 people a day, somewhere in there, depending on how long you really go. And, you know, a lot of them are going to reject what it is that I'm offering, not because they're angry at me generally. You know, sure. Some, some people are going to get angry just because you knocked on their door. Karen's. Yeah, sure. And, and that's fine. It is what it is, but you're going to have that no matter what in life, you're going to go to the gas station one day and somebody's going to get mad at you for parking too far away from the pump or whatever, you know, like that's just life. People are going to get mad at you. So just learn to deal with that. It's okay. Yeah. And, and like I said, mentally, it's you, they say it, you hear people say it's tough, but it's like tough compared to what? Exactly. And that's my thing. I'm like, it, I don't, I don't buy into that. This is even mentally tough. Like it's really just not tough. I've, I've done so many things that are so much more mentally tough. I mean, having friends is more mentally tough than doing door to door sales. You know, your friends go through ups and downs and, and you go through those things with them. That's, that's just as hard as door to door sales, if not harder, you know, but it's not going to stop you from having friends, is it? Not at all. So, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't buy that as, as necessarily a downside. Like it's, it's an excuse more than anything. Yeah. Uh, do you cut through lawns or are you more of a walk to the sidewalk kind of guy? Yeah, I cut through lawns for sure. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and so everyone's like, and especially as a rookie or whatever, like people are really nervous to do that. And I just make a joke about it every single time. And it's the same joke. Uh, like, I'll just walk through and I'll be like, yeah, I'm just giving you a free lawn or just doing lawn audits out here. And you, that one was free for you. Yeah. And they just laugh. <laughs> yeah. I've only ever had one person yell at me for walking through the lawn. And it's funny. I was actually walking up to go knock on a door with my brother. He was already talking to the guy. We had finished the cul-de-sac. Uh, it's a bunch of like super, super nice houses. And this guy, I think he's from England. He just starts yelling, get off of my lawn. You're messing up my lawn. And I'm like, how do you figure this is messing up your lawn? Like, how do you let people mow your lawn? They're driving something on it. Right. You know, like I get yeah, it. If, I agree. If somebody was walking the same path through your lawn every single day, it's going to mess your lawn up, but stepping on your lawn is not going to mess it up. So yeah, we, we had, we had one person reach out to us too. And, uh, they were one of those people who are really tough behind the phone, but he called in the office after hours, of course. And, saw us on camera walk through his lawn. He said that the next person who shows up from our company, he was going to throw in the Fox river. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let me, so we're the type of people who are just going to go knock that door again. So that's just what we did. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, Savages. And they, they're good swimmers. So they got out of the Fox river. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's, all right. So we talked about kind of income potential as far as the, structure of pay for the sales, but then you've also got like rewards and recognition, which is really important. And that's part of income slash just benefits, right? So what are some of the typical rewards and uh, recognitions that you see within this industry that are really you know noteworthy? Yeah, I think that um, rewards like in competitions and spiffs and like all the cool things you can get outside of the money. So we do something cool or they get, uh, I think it's 12 sales in a week in the first, you know, whenever they get that, will buy them their own Segway. Uh, and, it, that, and then that translates all the way up to door-to-door uh, -door con, like uh, Golden Door Award guys, like, you know, they go, go up on stage in front of all their buddies, in front of all their friends, in front of the whole industry. Like the people who aren't in the industry, they don't realize how big of an industry that actually is. And once you get inside of it, there's like real 
industry awards where you can go all the way up and again go on sam taggart sam was on our uh, on the show a few weeks ago and he has door-to-door con where he gives awards and accolades in front of everyone so and i was i think it's six hundred and fifty thousand, right mm-hmm. is that what it is yep six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in in your summer yep. sole revenue yeah so uh yeah there's there's a lot of cool things um inside the industry too but there's like, again there's shoes there's jackets there's shirt there's so much in there like um uh recognition even from your your own peers um like we do we do like a um a weekly podcast inside the company yep so we do we, we recognition from text to sales guys to whatever it's going on we, we give them recognition uh in front of everyone too so it's pretty cool yeah in the daily training meetings sometimes you know companies you, you call out the the guys that are succeeding you you recognize them right so for example here i'll stand up real quick and grab this but like with our company i just uh we had some of these uh like UFC style belts, belts made, right? That's awesome. And on there, we've got greatness achieved, unparalleled dedication, pro force, right? And so we'll we'll put that on them. Let let that be theirs for a week if they're you know one of the top performers, and not necessarily top performer from like number of cells, but they're just showing that they are actually putting in their hundred percent. You know, they're very dedicated, and and so that's that's how you win this award at our company. And and there's. You know, I, you know, like, again, there's so much in here that we get to unpack, but you know, we take our guys on trips. If they win competitions, if they hit certain revenue benchmarks, uh, we, we send them to Miami. Like we, we have all kinds of different things that we do with our guys, uh, just to show that we do care, you know, and we want to, it's capitalism at its finest, right? We want to reward the, the guys who are putting in the most work and going back to that, like, uh, I've told this story on the podcast before, but I was in the Carpenters Union, and this is not not no act of the union guys like at all. Um, work for a company in Wisconsin, and there's guys that have been there for 20 years, and they were skilled at their job. I'm not going to take that away from them; they're very good. Yeah, but let me tell you, their work ethic was not there. Like they soaked this company like you would not believe. And I always told myself, and I was like, no matter what, if I ever own a company, I will not pay someone more because they've worked here longer ever. And that, and I learned that by the time I was 22 years old. And, uh, and so like now being the position that I am, I still, that's it from text to, uh, executives, everything. It's all based off of your work ethic. Yep. So, you know, it, you learned this at the energy conference as well. Uh, but we've really ingrained that in pro force, uh, since the energy conference and really before that as well. But, you know, at pro force, you don't, we don't fill positions, you know, our people earn those positions, right? And so, yeah, we're, we're not just gonna tenure somebody into being a service manager or a branch manager or a team leader or whatever. No, show me that you deserve that position and you'll get it. I know a lot of the pushback too, like they don't have any sales experience. Like they, they don't know how, like that's one of the pushback we get. Well, I've never, I've never done it before. How am I gonna be good? Perfect, yeah. The majority of people that, do this have never done it before before they do it and as first year reps like you you already talked about how many dollars they make pay per door you know it's over six dollars um it doesn't matter if they've done it or not that's that's why as a you know business owners that are listening to this you really do need to to create an amazing training program and if not then lease it you know rent it from somebody that has it and give that to your guys because you know we do want to create an industry full of true professionals that actually know what they're doing. You know, um, we don't want guys going out there saying, Oh yeah, we spray the foundation three feet up and three feet out. And that's going to kill your above ground termites, you know, like, okay, are we selling a termite program here? Or are we selling general pest control? Like, you know, we need to train them on what to say, how to say it, when to say it. And, um, you know, the nonverbal communication, again, that's one of the benefits of doing this job. So as a business owner, make sure that is a benefit within your business is that they will gain the skills, right? You want them to feel like after the summer that they have just gone through a master's course in sales. And so when I'm recruiting guys, I let them know. It's one of the first things I let them know. I say, well, hey, when you're done with this, you'll feel like you got a master's degree in sales. 
I agree. I love that. Um, as a manager, um, let's just say you're managing 20 reps. Uh, like, so that's like a second year guy, right? Um, how do you, what's your style of management and what do you like to see your managers do? Yeah. So with managers, the main thing is leading from the front. So I want to see them. <laughs> I have that written down on my paper. <laughs> Good. Yep. So I want to see them lead from the front. Their, their biggest job as a manager is to motivate people by showing them what's possible. Right. So could not agree more. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not about how crazy good their their training meetings are in the morning their training meetings will be better if they are a better salesperson themselves like they'll just know what to talk about right they'll know what their guys are struggling with because they've gone out and they've experienced it thousands of times right and so that's what i expect from my managers is to go out there and gain the experience by doing it thousands of times being trained on it first and foremost then experiencing it and then they will be good managers just by leading from the front. So I don't want them to spend their whole day on the phone with the sales reps answering questions. But that's what happens, right? Sometimes, yeah, absolutely. So so what do you put in place to make sure that that doesn't happen? Well, all right. So any service-related question never goes to your sales manager. And that's the majority of the questions that these guys are asking anyways. So I have somebody else within my office that is going to be taking all of those phone calls. And then as far as reps um in sales questions when do you think those should happen yeah so those should happen um they can they can be texted um so they're, they're not going to be calls and again if it's a sales question like hey this customer's curious about this service related item and what it would cost like german roaches for example okay that again goes to like a branch manager or service manager or something like that uh, or your office manager and that's not going to go to your sales team leader that is on a door right now trying to make a sell to show you how many sales are possible during the day, right? So really, other than a text message to a to the to the whole group, to the whole team, to let whoever on the team answer it, it doesn't have to be the manager. Um, but yeah, it goes to a, a sales question board, so to speak, and then it's going to get answered by somebody. But it's not necessarily, I don't look at it as that sales team leader's responsibility to answer those questions that day. Yeah. And I, uh, we learned the hard way. I'm not going to lie. So we didn't, again, new to this, getting 100 calls a day. Like you can't do anything. You can't, you can't even knock doors. So we put the policy in place too that has to go to the message board or a text message. And we'll, if it's got to be a phone call, we'll do it after hours. Exactly. Yep. So after hours and then the training meeting the next day is a good time to go over any un unresolved questions. Um, and then obviously as a business owner, putting in really good training. So training video catalogs that answer all of those frequently asked questions. Okay. The first thing that that rep should be doing is going to the training. And if they can't find it in there, then yes, put it on the, in the message board. And that question will get answered as quickly as possible. For sure. Oh, as a, what are some, as a rep, um, not everything's uh, sunshine and rainbows, right? Uh, so maybe let's just talk them through like what the cons are to it as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're going to have days that you need to get out there and make money and it's raining. Yeah. That's funny that you say that because some of our best days are when it's raining <laughs> for real, but it's just how you look at it for, so year one, this is, a, this is a true story. Like you, I could take a stick and make a huge circle. As soon as a raindrop hit, my guys were done in that circle. They're like, shut it off. Year two, they figured it out though. And they started not like pouring rain. They're out there with ponchos on. But guess what? Everyone lets you do. They let you come in the house. And so they almost like feel bad for you. Yeah. I had a guy named JD that uh, worked with me and uh, his nickname during the summer was Rain Man. And it's because that was the only days he sold really, really well on. <laughs> Yeah. So it, he looked at it, you know, again, with rain, you got to look at it as, okay, there's a big benefit to this one. People are going to let me in the house Two, It's a talking point as far as what's making the bugs move around. Right. It, it can bring up that concern of, Hey, this rain is flushing bugs out of their nesting sites and it's got them moving. So, you know, you know, most people can relate with after a really hard rain, they generally see more bug activity. Absolutely. Uh, what are some other cons besides rain? 
I mean, obviously it can get pretty hot sometimes depending on where you're at. Those late August summers. Yeah. Those, they're pretty brutal. Those summer days that are a hundred degrees plus, you know, that, that can be a con again. That's the same con though, that you find in a lot of outdoor jobs. Yeah, for sure. Like people are still building houses in hundred degree weather. Yeah, exactly. And roofing houses, that'd be horrible. Right. But they're doing it. Guys putting asphalt down. That's horrible in hundred degree weather. Um, so yeah, it, again, it's a con, but is it a con that doesn't exist other places? Sure. It's not going to exist within the, within an office job. Um, I, I find it, uh, this is another funny story. I remember the first time we were sold in Florida, you have a bunch of, uh, guys coming from 30 degree weather, literally, cause we were up here, went down to Florida and we worked in like, I think it was like January of, and it was in Florida, but it was like 110 degrees. And <laughs> one of my reps, I remember it's like the second day and he was laying on the side of the sidewalk, just dead ass tired. It was so funny. It was hot. We're not used to that. But again, with a little bit of time, your body just naturally gets used to it. So that's true. And, and one of the benefits, but that kind of goes back to the benefit of this job. Like, you know, you you have flexibility of schedule. If if you are, you know, really overheating, okay take a break, go get, a, go get some water, go cool down for a minute. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend like fully cooling down because that shift in body temperature is really not great for you, you know? Uh, but you know, go, go get some water. Uh, it's, it's also a good reason for people to let you in the house. Well, it's really hot out here, here, come in, let's talk, you know? Um, so again, it's all about how you manage that throughout the day as to how big of a con that's going to be, but okay. That's a, that's a con. Um, you know, uh, another thing is your parents are probably going to look at you like you're crazy when you tell them you're going to go knock doors and sell pest control for a summer. That's a con. Yeah, we get, that's one, that's another huge one that we run into, but easy to overcome. We, we will literally jump on a meeting with them too. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what I tell the guys that I'm talking to about sales. I'm like, look, Hey, if you're talking to your parents about this, they're possibly going to have a problem with it. And I'm happy to jump on the phone with them. I'm happy to take them out to lunch whatever. You know, my dad had a problem with me doing it. He tried to get me not to do sales. And then I went out and I did it and I made a bunch of money and he was like, Hey, can you get your sister to do this next year? So, uh, one of my best reps, he said he had just graduated college and his dad said, my, my son is not a door knocker. So he exactly what he told him. And now fast forward a few years later, he absolutely loves his dad, loves it. Yeah. Uh, he realized he has money, helped his dad buy a boat. It's, Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's funny because I've actually seen kids inspire their dads to actually start knocking doors. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, he, you know, one was a college professor that I can think of off the top of my head. His son went out and did it and made more than his dad made as a college professor. And then his dad's like, hey, I have my summers off. I'll come out and knock too. Yeah. So that brings up the next subject then. So the people who are like, hey, I'm looking for like a full time job. I don't want to just work a summer internship. Oh, this is the perfect job then. Because when people say that, it, again, going down to that core reason why, what do you want out of a full time job? You want a lot of money, right? And then you also generally, like, I don't think I've ever talked to somebody that said that they don't want a flexible schedule. Do you know anybody that doesn't want a flexible schedule within their job? Not in 2024. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't either. And this job provides both, right? So you can make crazy good money. So we could go with that average of, you know, $160 or whatever, $150 per sale. Okay. Go out and you sell 200, 300 accounts in a summer. What did you make your first summer? And if you go tell that story to, 150 people that are looking for something to do, how many of them are going to come out and follow in your footsteps and let you manage them the next summer? And then you start looking at what you could make and overrides off, or, uh, off of recruiting and team leading and managing these guys. It's, it's a quick path to being able to make in the good six figures range by your second year, right? A hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 by your second year of doing this job. And at which point the, the workload is all between like, if you want to really extend it April through September, like that's where your biggest workload is. That's where your, 
your time flexibility is not massive. You're really dedicating yourself during that time. The rest of the year, even if you're recruiting, like what is recruiting to you? You know, recruiting to me is making friends, right? I'm, I'm calling a bunch of people. They're like-minded people. That's the kind of people I'm trying to get in touch with, right? People who want to make the most out of their lives, um, gain as much as they can financially, gain tons of experience and to grow their network, right? Of highly successful and motivated people, okay? We're better to do that than a bunch of door-to-door -door reps being around you. Um, so, you know, your, your off season, so to speak, or your recruiting season, you could be in the Bahamas recruiting. Go to Roatan, Honduras, take a scuba trip, you know, have an hour or two underwater that day. And then the rest of the day, you're on the phone talking to, to potential reps. Like, how bad of a lifestyle is that? Doesn't sound bad to me. I know it's not. It's a great lifestyle, you know? So, uh, yeah, I think it's a big benefit. How about the business owners who are listening that don't do door to door? Thinking about doing door to door, but they see more negative than the positive. They see the bad reviews. They see um, some bad apples that they just heard stories about. What do you say to those guys? So I'd say that those are all very possible outcomes if you don't properly manage the sales guys, right? And properly managing the sales guys is you, you really, again, going back to this preconceived notion of what a salesperson is. If you're if you're hiring a bunch of guys that are okay with being you know sleazy and pushing things that don't need to be pushed, you're gonna get the bad reviews, right? Again, go look at Proforce Pest Control's reviews. You know, uh, go to Google, search us, and the majority of our customers, like 98% of our customers, were sold door to door, and we have very very few bad reviews that are due to door to door, right? We have very few bad reviews due to the service. And so, you know, first and foremost, when you're a business owner, your first priority is your product, right? Well, what is your product, all right? If it's pest control, it's giving the customer a great experience. And part of that sure is taking care of their bugs. Um, now you've got to define exactly what that experience is going to look like. And that is the limitations of what the sales rep is allowed to say, right? They can't say again, oh yeah, you know what? We're gonna go in your crawl space every single time and in your attic every single time if that's not your service protocol. If it is, great, let them say it. But you need to define what your service protocol and limitations are and make sure that your guys know how imperative it is to never say those things because it will negatively impact their quality of work, right? If they start getting a bunch of bad reviews on this company, it's going to make it harder for them to sell. So the, the sales reps really need to be bought into boosting the, the appearance of the company. And when you do that and you get guys that are buying into that, and that should be a pretty common topic, you know, talking about not generating bad reviews and how to not do that. You're just not going to get those bad reviews. So I'd say that that's not a problem as long as you're willing to step in and manage that. Yeah, how many times have you put it and put on social media or next door or Facebook groups? And because th this is what I, this I, I think of like one of my best friends, like he lives in a really nice uh, neighborhood in OKC. And he's like, this is why we don't do it. Because this is every time that they're in here, they're posting, oh, these guys are back. Like door, people are knocking doors. And you know what I mean? That's fine. That's not a bad review to your company. Like it's not going to, you know, that's not existing on Google where people are searching for a company. Like the, the bad review comment is more a business owner's concern that future people that want to search their business are going to look at this business as not being a good business because they see a three-star review company, right? Or a two-star review company. And <clears throat> that just doesn't have to be the, the case. And one, anybody that's concerned about their reviews, they should be using a service like Applause or BirdEye or Podium or something like that to help generate positive reviews. And your positive reviews are generally going to come from your technicians anyways, right? So so your your bigger concern is how good are your technicians? Yeah, how good is the product, right? That's what it all comes down to. Exactly. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> um, I, I mean, again, you, you, as soon as you get put on Facebook, or next door in your area, it seems like it shuts down. 
Um, do you, do you have your guys move then? Or do you, do you even, can you feel it? I'm, I'm talking more, I, I'm talking more high level now, but cause I know as soon as, as soon as the area, sh- like you can almost feel like it goes ice cold, right? Or we'll just, I just know what happened. I'll move my guys. Yeah. It depends on the guy. There's certain guys that I have that just have that mentality of, okay, look, all the people that are getting frustrated in here were the people that weren't going to buy from me anyways. Right. The other people are the people I've been looking for this whole time anyway, so I'm just going to keep looking for them, right? Um, I mean, I've knocked plenty of neighborhoods where everybody's telling me, oh, yeah, the, you know, and it's generally when I'm knocking and there's like other companies in there with me, right? Absolutely. That's, a, that's where I was headed with this conversation. That, that generally happens. You know, you got some solar guys, you've got a bunch of other stuff going on, and that's going to generate these these negative comments on the, on the feed. Well, again, there's actually people in that neighborhood generally that don't like a lot of their neighbors and they'll just buy half the time, you know, just because they want to say, "Eh, you know, screw my neighbors, (laughs) you know, whatever, whatever that reasoning is. But I, I, if it's me personally, I'm not moving out of that neighborhood. I'm trying to create as good of a, an experience because um, like I said, a lot of the times that negative comment isn't because of me. It was because of a bunch of other people that were in the neighborhood and I can go in there and present myself in a, in a more professional manner than a lot of these other guys are. And so I stand out and it, I actually end up selling pretty good in those situations. So yeah, for me personally, I don't move, but if, if I've got a sales guy that just isn't on that level, yeah, I'll go ahead and move them. And sometimes I'll, I'll jump in or I'll send one of my really good reps in there to go through it. And then that shows that guy, hey, you could have still sold here. It's exactly where I was headed with the conversation. Cool. I wrote down this from the very beginning, imposter syndrome. I've had in the past myself. So and you brought it up. So let's, let's chat about that because it happens to a lot of reps. Oh, yeah. It, if you're if you're not pushing yourself extremely hard, you'll you'll never have it. Right. Um, but. I want to feel imposter syndrome every single year. That's when I know that I'm doing what I should be doing. Yeah. You have that, you have that, you have the two guys on your shoulder, right? One saying you can do it. The other one saying you can't. It's like, which one do you like to lean into? And that's the way I always teach my guys lean into that. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, even everything that we do in life, like the first time I doing social media, Sophia listened to this, like you don't think that I was nervous the first time I was posting videos, just, but now it's just like, well, whatever, right? Just pick up your phone and just do it. So just every time you step out of that comfort zone and you feel that, just lean into it and just do more of it because you you know that you're learning. There you go. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what's the cure to imposter syndrome? I lean into it. I just I just lean right into it and in everything in everything that I do. I, if I know that I feel that internal like, oh shit, like I'm nervous, like or I feel it. Like I just know I go right I, I go right into it. Yeah. Like. You know, if I, if I were to ask you, Jonas, um, you know, do you, do you believe that you can have a hundred million dollar a year pest control company? hundred percent. You know, you can, however, you know, as you look at that and you're like, man, I have to manage a hundred million dollar pest control company. You start breaking it down into everything that has to go on with that. And the kinds of people, the C-suite people that you need to have within that, like you're, you're starting to have to hire people that are way smarter than you are. I already am. Like, and it's the craziest thing ever. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Like they're so smart. I just let them do their job. Like I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm not saying that I am, but and I don't have a college degree, but I hire the people that do. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's, that's where that imposter syndrome can really start to grow. And, you know, for a door to door rep, again, I've never sold anything in my life. All right. I've got imposter syndrome. I'm trying to come out here and be a sales guy. Okay, lean into that. That's that should be your motivation to practice more, which gives you an advantage over the guy that doesn't feel that, right? So that's fuel for the for the for the fire for sure. Yeah, and uh, it's just what I've always done. That's worked for me, and I'm saying it works for everyone. But that's just how I operate. Yeah, I believe it would work for everyone if they really, really, truly lean into it and lean into it long enough to uh, to see the benefits of it. Yeah, and it's just like again bring up the podcast like i've never done a podcast before and of course i was nervous to post out in the world like is everyone gonna like it they're gonna hate it like i'm not gonna have any listeners like of course you have a, a self-doubt like well i'm just gonna do it anyway see what happens and now look at we're almost 100 episodes in you know 1500 to 2500 downloads a month like it's 
it's growing. Super fun. And now I get to talk with people like you and hundreds of other people that just reach out just as friendships and hey, podcast was great. Like, I love it. You know, it's so much fun. Like we're helping people. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's another benefit that sales guys get from this is like the resilience building. You know, you, you truly grow. I, you know, the, the most growth I've ever had is really just due to -to door-to-door sales. Like it has built my resilience. I think it has helped me be a better husband. You know, it's helped me be a better father because I'm able to deal with problems with a cooler head, you know, and part of that's, you know, my entrepreneurship you know, career as well. But let's face it, as a door to door sales rep, you are learning. That's another benefit. You're learning how to be an entrepreneur. You're you're dealing with the fact of if if my business, which is me selling, doesn't perform or my sales guy is selling isn't performing, then I'm not going to make a lot of money. That that is what entrepreneurship is. When they when they don't close a job or someone cancels, right? Like, oh, well, you don't know what it's like. I'm like, dude, I have people fire me every single day. Employees fire me. I, I we get fired daily, like from accounts to cancel. Like we get fired too. So we know what it's like, but it's just overcoming all those rejections. Like it's nothing new to us either. Exactly. So that, that's the thing. You, you know, the the skills, the resilience that you build by doing this, like it's just it's really second to none. And it's, it's a massive benefit that I really hope people can start seeing on a, on a much broader spectrum. I hope parents of these kids can start seeing that. Yeah, you know, it's funny because like highly successful parents, a lot of them, especially in the entrepreneur world, they all tell me that they want their kids to go out and knock on doors. Yeah, so my stepson is 18, going to graduate this year. He had to sell uh, like these baseball cards in the summer. And he's like, oh, here, mom, Jonas, go sell these things. I'm nah, not how it's going to happen. So, that, so this is what we're going to do. Grab them. Let's go out in the doors. We had it out in the doors. He had 20 of them sold in like two hours. One day, gone. So that he was like, oh, this is awesome. So we'll get in, him out of the doors eventually. But letting him go play baseball in college first. There you go. Yeah. He's got to do summer ball and stuff, huh? Exactly. Uh, what, what about the resume building part of this? But maybe they, maybe maybe they're, this is just a stepping stone. Sure. Yeah. If this is a stepping stone for somebody and they, you know, I guess it just depends on where they're trying to get to. But, uh, you know, that's one of my favorite things about my career. Like the, one of the biggest rewards personally that I've had is the amount of phone calls that I've had from prior reps from prior years. Um, for example, Ethan Smith, you know, he he has he came out and I let him film some content for us is like schooling was all about film and content creation and stuff like that. And he came out, he sold door to door with us. He filmed a little bit of like promotional material for us. So he gave him some experience in his field, but then also pushed him to be a good salesperson. And he's called me multiple times throughout his career after door to door to let me know, Oh, Hey, I just, I just got done filming this video for this really famous rap artist or, um, he recently went on tour with Harry Styles doing a bunch of filming with Harry Styles. He, he's done so many really cool filming experiences and worked with some really amazing people in the industry. And he's just super proud of that. And he calls me to let me know it's not just because of the film opportunity that you gave me and helping me build my resume on that side. He said, what landed me all of these jobs is my ability to sell that I learned from door to door sales. I would not have been able to sell myself to these people. And I wouldn't have had the courage to even try to, had I not come out and worked with you over the summer. Um, I've got other people like Jesse, who he reached out to me not too long ago and uh, let me know that he has made a ton of money. Uh, I don't even want to say the number, but he's, he's been doing extremely well and he says it's because of the skill set that he gained from door-to-door sales um and i have got hundreds of these stories i've got another guy that's a commodities trader that's making great money that he says he would have never landed the job or gotten onto the team now he's trading uh energy commodities you know oil and um uh, what's butane and stuff like that and that team produces like 
half a billion dollars in sales a year. And it's like a three man team. And he got onto that team just because of the skill set that he gained from door to door. I uh, couldn't agree more. It's such a great resume builder. Like I think of like, like I think of like the people who are doing internships, um, that go apply for the same exact job the next year. Right. And one person has that they went out and sold, you know, half a million dollars on the doors versus a kid who wouldn't work in his industry in his field, which one are they going to choose? Hands down, they're going to choose the guy, the guy who sold a half million dollars in revenue. Absolutely. And that's, that's the thing, like even with Dylan, you know, he said that to get on that team, he was up against like the other consideration was a guy that went to one of the Ivy league schools. Right. And, Dylan was a Utah State University Aggies graduate. You know, um, it, it his resume from a school perspective wasn't nearly as impressive as this other guy. But he said that, again, one of the biggest things on the resume that boosted it was the fact that he had come out and sold as well as he did. And that told them that he was willing to take a ton of risk for himself and that he performed well with the risk. And that's what commodities trading is. What else would you like to to discuss? What do you feel like these viewers need? Or are we running out of time? Yeah, I think we're over. I mean, it goes by so fast. We're hour 15 already in. So pretty wild. Um, I, you know, I got a meeting in the next 15 minutes, so I'll probably jump off here. Um, but again, we can always circle back. And I, I had a whole list of questions. And man, the questions that I had written down, we pretty much covered. There you go. Good. Awesome. I love it. For the people that want to, you know, in your area that are listening to you, uh, we'll have your information, obviously, in your bio. And then click on there to reach out to you. Make sure that uh, you'll get some sales reps out there. How many guys are you looking for out there? So <laughs> right now, we're looking for probably another 10 for this year. And I've got some really big things happening right now. I can't discuss. I know you do. Yeah, I, I've, I told, you I've told you. Um, about some things that are going on. And let's just say next year, I my goal would be to be somewhere around four to 500 reps. Baller. I can't wait to see it because I know you'll do it. So let's uh, let's make that happen. <laughs> all right, buddy. Well, it was good chatting with you. Thanks for all the valuable insight in door-to-door -door space. And uh, it's going to be a great summer for you. Oh, you too, Jonas. You guys are crushing it. I'm really looking forward to watching you guys. And we're going to have some competitions against each other this summer, all right? Oh, yeah, we are. Sounds good, man. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of Pest Control Millionaire. We don't charge any money for the show, obviously, but the podcast isn't free. You can pay for the podcast by sharing it with your friends and your family. So please like and subscribe and give us a five-star review on your favorite podcast app. These things make a huge difference for us. If you have any specific questions you want answered about the business or your life by me or my guest, send an email to info at pestcontrolmillionaire.com. And if you want to get in touch with me about any personal business coaching, check out our website at www.pestcontrolmillionaire.com. Com. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you guys again on the next one.